हाई एवरी वन वेलकम टू सर्जरी दादा एंड वन मोर एपिसोड ऑफ क्लिनिकल के सिनारियो सो विद मी आई हैव अ पेशेंट हु इज हैविंग अ क्रॉनिक वीनस इनसफिशियंसी एंड दिस पेशेंट हैज बिन ऑपरेटेड टू ईयर्स बैक द पेशेंट अंडरवेंट ट्रेंडलनबर्ग सर्जरी विद द स्टैब एवल्शन ऑफ द परफोरेटर्स नाउ दिस पेशेंट हैज प्रजेंटेड टू अस विद पेनफुल सोलन टेंडनस ओवर द लिम एंड अलॉन्ग विद दैट द पेशेंट हैज ulcers over the gaiter zone so what are we dealing with let us understand the concept of chronic venous insufficiency but before that let me give you an overview of the about chronic venous insufficiency what is it now you have to understand that in our lower limbs we have two venous systems one is the superficial venous system and one is the deep venous system now in an in our ancestors who used to be on the four limbs the superficial venous system used to be useful but now it is not and over the time it just becomes a return pathway for the main stream blood if it is not able to go via deep venous system so let me tell you if you look at the site of venous insufficiency the site itself will tell you the nature of the vessel involved usually if the venous insufficiency is along the medial aspect of the thigh going to the medial aspect of the leg and this is the territory then that is known as a great saphenous vein gsv insufficiency many a times you may have the insufficiency involving the posterior aspect of the limb so if it is involving the posterior aspect of the limb then that is a short saphenous vein insufficiency many a time this is the popliteal fossa and you can have a dilated vein going in this upward so posterior aspect of the thigh then that is known as vein of giaco mini and last is if it is the entero anterior aspect of the thigh then that is accessory venous insufficiency accessory saphenous vein insufficiency so now you know that based on the site you can decide so if it is medial aspect of the thigh and the leg yes it is a gsv if it is only the anterior aspect of the thigh then that is an accessory short Uh, accessory gsv ex accessory saphenous vein insufficiency if it is involving only the posterior aspect then that is known as the short saphenous vein insufficiency and posterior aspect of the thigh if it is involving then that's a vein of giacomini now if you see this limb what are the classical changes that you get to see so i will show you that this is the classical profile of this patient we have already done debridements for this patient now what are the things that you are getting you are seeing pigmentation this is what is classically known as lds what is lds this is known as lipodermatosclerosis now what is the concept of lipodermatosclerosis what kind of ulcer is this this is a non healing venous ulcer so we shall be discussing something about the seep but before that let us talk about the sequence how the things happen and where the things happen if you see what is this particular location known as this is known as a gaiter zone so 10 to 15 cm above the medial malleolus uh this is what is a classical gaiter zone and this is the point of maximum congestion now let us start understanding what is chronic venous insufficiency now this can be explained with venous hypertension there is problem in the return of the blood from the lower extremity and pooling of blood in the peripheries now because of this what will happen there will be venous hypertension because of this there will be opening of leak leak junctions or gap junctions and thus wbcs rbcs they are going to get deposited now once the wbcs go or inflammatory markers go the patient will start scratching and this is what is very important because initially it leads to edema and then it leads to damage leading to ulcers and this is very evidence of this now when we are talking about the other things that will happen remember the blood which leaks out has hemosiderin deposition and because of this pigmentation happens now one very important thing is that what or where are the pump operators so this is calf so these calves are your pump operators now when the blood gets congested a message is given to calf to increase their bulk and do you know when they increase their bulk there will be calf muscle hypertrophy so narrowing at this level why narrowing happens at this level because of the damage fibrosis induced healing hypertrophy at this level so this becomes your classical champagne bottle leg so what is a champagne bottle leg appearance it is a hypertrophied calf with the narrowing 
or tapering of the lower limb with the maximum tapering at the level of gaiters zone. This is what is the champagne bottle leg. Now, when we talk about the grading of this system, we need to understand what are the types of dilatations we have. So there are various dilatations. If you see, can you focus on these small, small channels? So these are these are small thread vessels. So we have telangiectasias, we have reticular veins and we have varicose vein. Less than 1 mm vessel diameter, they qualify for spider veins or the telangiectasias. If it is more than 1, up to 3, that is what is reticular veins and more than 3 mm cosmetically unacceptable veins they are known as varicose veins so classical criteria is tortuous cosmetically unacceptable veins more than 3 mm in diameter they are varicose vein after that we decide the seep now every medical student should know about seep seep means C for clinical, E for etiology, A for anatomy and P for patho pathophysiology. So this is a classification for grading a system of chronic venous insufficiency where C1 includes the telangiectasias, C2 includes the varicose vein, C3, C3 includes the edema. Now when we talk about C2, now we have to check. Sometimes the patient complains of dragging pain. So, if the patient is symptomatic, it will become C2S. If it is patient is asymptomatic, this is C2A. And if it is recurrence, so this patient has already undergone a Trendelenburg surgery. If it is recurrence of venous insufficiency, this will be known as a C2R. C3 is edema. C4 depends now on what pattern of skin changes. C4A is pigmentation. C4B is lipodermatosclerosis. And C4C is corona phlebectasia. Now, what's the difference between this lipodermatosclerosis and corona phlebectasia? We are not getting it here, but remember, it's a small patch of fibrosis with the reticular veins around. So, uh, we are not having uh, C4C, corona phlebectasia, or you can say atrophy blanchi in another name that we call it. It is nothing but a small patch of fibrosis with the reticular veins actating around in a ring and that is why it is known as corona phlebectasia. C5 is a healed ulcer, C6 is a non-healing ulcer. So what is this dear students? It's a non-healing ulcer. Now when we are talking about non-healing ulcer, chronic venous insufficiency, we should always understand that along the margins we can develop SCC also. And what is that well differentiated SCC also known as? That is known as the Marzolin's ulcer. So when we talk about Marzolin's ulcer, they are well differentiated squamous cell cancer. Remember a very important point. SCCs are highly radio sense, highly radio sensitive, but it is absolutely contraindicated. Radiotherapy is absolutely contraindicated for Marzolin. Why? Because radiation itself is an ionizing agent and there is a risk of conversion of well differentiated into poorly differentiated SCC. That's why it's not. Then when we talk about etiology, EC is congenital, EP is primary where we don't have it from the birth, but there is no associated cause and ES is secondary. Now, if you see this patient, it is secondary to surgery. So yes, we can take it ES also in this case right now. Then A stands for anatomy, A superficial, A deep venous system, A perforated. Now, this is very important, Ikman. Now, in this, in this case scenario, perforators have been ligated. So we have got a Doppler done for this and yes, there is a recurrence at the level of SFJ in this case. The next very important thing is the pathophysiology. Since there is problem with the superficial renal uh, venous system, there is a reflux. So PR stands for reflux, PO stands for obstruction. So if we get any debris or if we get the D venous system involved, that means there has to be a component of obstruction. So O stands for obstruction if both are there reflux and obstruction then we call it what po plus r remember if in case of perforator incompetency it's always r so what is the classical c for this patient it is c c2 because of the recurrence so c2 plus 4b because of lipodermatosclerosis plus c6 why 6 because it's a non-healing ulcer es because it is secondary and P stands, uh, then we have A, it is the superficial, so AS and P stands for PR, that is reflux. So this is how we go for the SEEP regimen. Now comes the question, 
to cut the long story short otherwise this video will become very large how to manage this case scenario remember the first line management is always conservative and when we talk about conservative there are three principles limb elevation physiotherapy and one very important thing is the regular dressing and the medical therapy when we talk about the medical therapy the drug of choice is pentoxifilin that is trental or pentoxifilin 400 mg tds for 6 to 7 months basically remember the pentoxifilin can halt the pigmentation reverse it down but it can halt the lipodermatosclerosis but once lipodermatosclerosis happens it cannot be reversed and this is very important now what could be an alternate diagnosis in this case remember had this patient been a patient of dvt prior history of dvt this condition is known as pts what is that post thrombosis syndrome or post thrombosis limb where you have ulceration pigmentation and extreme pain which is irre you can say irrevocable the patient will not get any benefit from any treatment so you need to tell the patient that post thrombosis syndrome happens post dvt where we get same ulceration same pain and you can say extreme of itching or pruritus and this cannot be treated it has to be palliated by symptomatic care only now in this case what is so important when we talk about the dressing it has to be a multi layered compression dressing we cannot use talking at this point of time because of the ulcers so here we use a multi layered compression dressing and what is that known as yes you are guessing it right bisgard's regimen or you can say that's also known as an una boot remember four layers the innermost layer is of what is of a gauze or a cotton then we have the outer layer of the second layer that is the orthopedic wool the same orthopedic wool that we use in the plasters the third is elastic crepe and the fourth is elastic crepe now the catch is when you are using elastic crepe the inner layer that that is the third layer of elastic crepe will give you one third of the desired pressure and the outer layer will give you two third the pressure required here is 30 to 35 mm hg you don't increase it beyond that because the moment it goes crosses beyond 40 there will be lymphatic obstruction also and then the problem will start now had this been a case of lymphatic obstruction the foot would have been involved so if you see in this case the foot is absolutely normal had it been a case of lymphedema the foot would be edematous and this would not be only isolated to the level above the ankle remember this is a classic difference if the limb is swollen uniformly up to foot it is never venous it is always a lymphatic obstruction if the foot is spared it is above the ankle it is a venous obstruction again one more very important thing is loss of malleolar pitting so here there is no edema but had it been a you can say limb of lymphedema this malleolar pitting would have been lost this is there is something which is known as stemmer sign here again you cannot see stemmer sign because Uh, you are not able to pinch so uh, why you are not able to pinch because of the excessive fibrosis contraction of the skin normally it can be pinched just see we can pinch the skin here uh, pinching of the skin this is known as stemmer sign but if you see here you are not able to pinch the skin and thus you can make a conclusion that it could be lymphatic obstruction but dear students this is not absolute remember in lymphatic obstruction the foot is involved first and then we get that tree trunk limb buffalo hum the squaring of the toes the toes are absolutely normal they are not square toes so this is what is the classical management to revise the medical management uh, to revise the surgical or intervention management of this i'll show i'll make a separate video but in a nutshell i'll tell you when we talk about interventions i personally prefer to go for evla now and what is evla endovenous laser ablation we can go for a thermal ablation with the help of radio frequency also the other classical old school surgery is the trendelenburg surgery and for perforators yes we can go for either the trivex that is a motorized phlebectomy or we can go for seps which we do at our center that is subfacial endoscopic perforator surgery i particularly don't do the stab ablation which is the commonest performed surgery because of the multiple scars that is created because you create a multiple stabs so thank you for watching this video we'll be coming up with more such interesting video soon